Hey guys, how's it going? Absolutely beautiful day out here. I'm out in this gorgeous area, literally just surrounded by sagebrush. I love terrain like this, it is so pretty. My goal over the next couple days is to hopefully photograph some greater sage grouse. These are fun, unique birds that I love spending time with. In order to photograph them though, I am going to need to set up a photography blind in order to get close enough and remain hidden from these birds. Last year I came out with a video where I detail a couple different types of camouflage that I use in my wildlife photography. Camouflage that helps me remain hidden from wildlife as I photograph them. This week's video is going to be similar, but rather than talking about camouflage that I use, I'm going to talk about some different photography blinds that I use. I'll detail out four different types of photography blinds that I use in my wildlife photography, how I use them. I'll show you each one and then I'll go over some tips, some things to remember when using a photography blind to get closer to and remain hidden from wildlife. Follow along this week, I hope you enjoy. Let's jump into the first example. The first type of blind that I wanted to talk about is called a pop-up blind. These types of blinds are fairly inexpensive. You can get them at the store or online. I've had this blind for years now and it's still as good as the day that I got it. It's a great blind. Uh, they're also very easy to set up and take down. Let me show you here. The reason it's called a pop-up blind, that's why. And that's pretty much it, honestly. There are some poles I can put in the middle here that kind of prop the roof up a little bit and some stakes that I can uh, stake the corners down. I've got some lines here that I can help secure it down if you're in a really windy area. But overall, wonderful, wonderful blind. I love using this blind, especially in areas like this. I showed you before, I'm in this amazing landscape with so much sagebrush everywhere. But photographing animals out here, it can be a little bit tricky because of all the sagebrush and different obstacles that might get in the way. Especially smaller animals like these sage grouse that I'm out here to photograph. So the nice thing about this blind is that these uh, windows that I photograph from, they're just high enough where my camera is just over the majority of this sagebrush out here. Or any rocks or different obstacles like that. So anytime I'm out here to photograph uh, these grouse or any other animals and there's a lot of obstacles. This is my go-to blind again because it allows me to get over the sagebrush or other vegetation, rocks, things like that, and I'm able to photograph the birds that way or whatever animal it is that I'm photographing. There are a couple downsides to a, a blind like this though. Again, because the windows are a little bit higher, if I'm photographing just a really really small animal and they come really close to the blind, my lens is gonna be pointed down at them and I, I personally, I just, I don't like that angle. The other downside, and I'm gonna pull this back apart here so I can show you. The other downside is that this isn't very compactable. Uh, it doesn't pack down very small. So someone like me who really enjoys getting out and backpacking looking for wildlife, this isn't my favorite blind to take with me if I'm backpacking. If I was going out multiple days in an area like this, it would just kind of be an inconvenience to carry around because I've got my backpacking backpack with all my gear, all my camera gear, all that stuff. And then I really just have to strap this onto that backpack because it's too big to fit into it. And it's just kind of a weird shape when it's packed down. It's, it's a little too bulky for me. So those are my two biggest uh, reasons why I won't use this blind. Again, because if I'm photographing a very small animal and I expect them to come close to the blind, I'll be pointed down and it's just not the most compact of blinds. The next blind that I'm gonna show you though gets around both of these obstacles. So let's jump into that example. 
I apologize in advance for the wind noise in this portion of this video. This area is always incredibly windy, so I apologize in advance for that noise. The next type of blind that I wanted to discuss is one that I refer to as a ground blind. There are a lot of different companies that make similar blinds like this. This is one that I just made myself and it works great for what I need it to do. The advantage of using this type of blind over that pop-up blind that I showed you before is that you're a lot lower to the ground when you use this. So it's great when you're photographing smaller animals or birds. Uh, tomorrow morning I'm hoping to photograph some sharp-tailed grouse out here. That's why I've got it set up here. The grouse will come and display in this more open area in front of me here. And this should put me right on eye level with those birds. And that image hopefully will be much more appealing than it would be uh, if I was pointed down at that bird if I were using that pop-up blind. The other nice thing with this type of blind is it packs down incredibly small so I can backpack with it very easily and I can take it pretty much anywhere that I go. The downside of using a blind like this is that it can get uncomfortable pretty quickly. Because it's so low to the ground, it's designed for me to lay down inside and have the camera in front of me. Laying down for hours at a time on the bare ground can get uncomfortable pretty quickly, so that's the main disadvantage of using a blind like this. The other thing, kind of the opposite of that pop-up blind I showed you before, if you do have any obstacles in the area, you're not getting around them this high off or this low to the ground. So it can make it incredibly difficult if you do have any obstacles, even tall blades of grass or anything, you'll see those in all the images, unless you can maneuver yourself in a position where that won't be an issue. So again, this is a great blind to use for smaller animals in more open areas like the one I have in front of me here. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you may already be familiar with this next blind that I wanted to talk about. I'm in my floating blind right now. This is a blind that I made a few years ago and I use it as often as I possibly can. It is a wonderful blind to use when photographing waterfowl or shorebirds. Uh, I've even photographed beavers and stuff in it. Uh, the concept is basic. It's a blind that floats around me in the water. I'm in the middle of a river right now, photographing some ducks in the area. And like I say, it is just a wonderful blind to use for photographing waterfowl and uh, shorebirds and whatnot. That being said, there are some complexities that come along with using it. And uh, I've got a, a playlist of videos on my channel. I'll, I'll uh, link those in the description below. But I've got a whole playlist of videos on my channel that go over some of the things to consider when using a blind like this. Uh, you always want to make sure you're getting in and out without the birds seeing you, so that generally means early in the morning is when I get in. And then once the birds have left for the day, that's when I get out. You uh, always want to make sure that you're using it in a location that is allowed to use it. There's a lot of locations, bodies of water, that it's not allowed to use a blind like this or you may need a special permit, something like that. Uh, you also want to make sure there's enough water or not too much water to use it in. So there's different things to consider when using a blind like this. Again, I've got a playlist of videos where I detail out all that information and uh, I give information on how I know where to set it up and what I look for when I set it up, things like that. So go check those out. Overall though, a wonderful blind. I absolutely love, love using it and I'm having a blast this morning with all the wildlife that I've already seen out here. Using a natural blind is a fantastic way of getting up close and personal with wildlife. Using the local vegetation as camouflage can be one of the best methods of camouflage that you can use. I'm out right now looking for a group of river otters that have been frequenting this area. This group is particularly shy, so I'm going to use this natural pocket in the vegetation here to be my blind, essentially. I'm going to make this a little bit more hidden, this area, so hopefully I can photograph these river otters as they come through. So let's cover a few tips and things to remember when using and setting up a natural blind. So as you can see, natural blind, great option to remain hidden from local wildlife. Uh, you wouldn't even be able to tell that there's a, 
a hole in the vegetation here where I'm going to be sitting. So how this is going to work essentially is my camera lens is going to come out the middle of this. Uh, what I did to make this is you just saw I took a dead branch that I found over here and it had a little fork in it and I used that fork to push uh, two of the green branches here apart just a little bit more uh, not enough to damage them or anything like that and uh, that just widened the opening that I had to work with here and, and uh, gave me a little bit more room on the inside and then I took my uh, ghillie net which simulates uh, grass you know other vegetation whatever and uh, with that ghillie net and a dead uh, cattail reed that I got over here as well I put the cattail reed across the top as a little brace and draped my ghillie net over that to cover the majority of the hole. And then I got some dead grass uh, and kind of wove it into the net, put it around the base. I can, I can do it a little bit better here uh, so it looks a little bit more natural. But uh, for the most part, this is, this is it. And this should be perfect for these otters. And uh, so let's, let me take you inside and I'll show you what it looks like from the inside, how it's going to work. And uh, then I'll, I'll give you a couple pointers and tips, things to remember when making and using a natural blind. All right, so this is the inside. Uh, these are the branches that I widened with that branch. Um, let me get into position and kind of show you. So this is what my view looks like. Uh, you can see my lens sticking out the middle there and I've got the smallest little space just underneath where I'll be able to look outside and uh, see what the otters are doing or anything moving in the area. All right, so let's cover a few things. When using one of these natural blinds, there's some things that you'll want to keep in mind. It'll just give you better results uh, in the long run. So first thing that I want to talk about is knowing your subject. Uh, know what senses they tend to use more and that'll help you know how to use this blind. So for example, these otters that I'm out here trying to photograph today, they've got very acute hearing. Uh, so one thing that uh, I'll do is use a silent shutter on my camera or just run video. Do something that's completely silent with these guys because if they know at all that I'm here, if they hear any irregular noises that they're not used to, they're gonna take off and I'm gonna lose my opportunity. So you don't wanna put all this work into making this blind, uh, setting up the right location and everything and have it not work out because uh, you made some sort of noise or something like that. If you've got an animal that relies more on its sense of smell, you need to limit how much time you're spending in this blind. If you're just sitting in here all day, every day, that animal soon is going to know that there's something in this area and it's going to make it uncomfortable because it's going to be able to smell you. You're going to leave your smell on the plants and and uh, all that after a while. So just know your animal, know what senses it tends to use more and that can help you determine how to use the blind. The next thing that I wanted to cover obviously is light. Uh, I've got the sun rising behind me and it's going to be behind me all day. So uh, this area where I know the otters have been frequenting uh, I'm going to set up on the side that's going to give me the best light to photograph them in. Obvious tip, just thought I'd throw it in there. The next thing that I wanted to cover, and the most important thing in my opinion, is just be respectful while you're out here. Uh, again, when you're setting up the blind, respect the plants that you're uh, using to help hide you. Respect the animal that you're hoping to photograph. Don't do anything that's going to affect its behavior or alter its behavior or anything like that. Anything that's going to stress it out. Uh, just try to go about as unseen and undetected as possible and uh, you're just going to have a great time using this type of blind. It's, it's such a great way to photograph and observe animals. Last thing that I wanted to cover check for ticks. I'm sitting here in grass, in vegetation, shrubs. I already pulled a tick off me. Um, check for ticks and other creepy crawlies because it's no fun having those things on you. So uh, just again be careful, be safe, go out prepared and uh, these types of blinds can be just fantastic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's video. Using a photography blind, especially if used properly and correctly,
can be a great way to get that picture of the animal you've been wanting to photograph for so long now. It's a great method of photography. It's one that I personally love. There's a lot of people out there though who don't really enjoy using photography blinds for various reasons. One of those reasons being be prepared to practice a whole lot of patience when using a photography blind. You could sit in that blind potentially for hours or even days and just get a handful of images or no images at all. And that can be hard when you spend so much time in that blind to uh, just get, a, like I say, a handful of, of images or nothing at all. Another reason that some people don't like using photography blinds is you're pretty immobile when you use one. Say you're in that blind for hours and that animal finally shows up, only it's 200 yards away. You can't get up and move towards it at that point. You're pr pretty much stuck in your spot. If you were to get that blind and start carrying it over, the animal's going to wonder why the big moving bush is coming towards it and that might alert it, scared away. So you are pretty immobile stuck in your spot while you're in that photography blind. But like I say, me personally, I love using them. It's opened up so many opportunities to get so many pictures by using these different types of blinds that I showed you. I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Do you guys use photography blinds in your wildlife photography? If so, what kind? Is it one of the types that I've showed you here today or is it something different? I'd love to hear from you guys. Also, what are some other methods that you guys use to get closer to wildlife, to photograph them, or to remain hidden from wildlife? Again, I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to keep going. I've got quite a ways that I, I got to go today, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to photograph those sage grouse here in the next couple days. But I'm going to keep going. Thank you so much for following along. I hope you've enjoyed. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out so much. Stay safe out there, you guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.